GT40 Cobra Explorer. You guys love these intake manifolds, and today we're going to explore, spoiler alert, which one is best. Hello and welcome, I'm Darren and this is the SN95 Owner's Guide, the series where we explore specifics to SN95 Mustangs 5 liter and beyond. If you're new to the channel, I ask you after this video to take a look around and see what other content we have available that might interest you. If you're a returning subscriber, it's really great to have you along for the ride. Now let's get to the mailbag items. First item, I really appreciate all the viewer support. It really makes these easy to do and it also makes them really interesting and engaging for me to research and bring you some facts and figures that I have available. Second item, I'd like you to go over and take a look at Streetcar Shenanigans. This channel is run by Nick and he has an awesome 1994 SVT Cobra that has a 363 Dart build on the go that he is reworking for better performance down the strip and he is doing that right now. So by this summer it might be interesting to really see what becomes of that project. But right now you can get in on the ground floor and follow from day one. That all taken care of, let's get into today's topic which is specifically factory style intake manifolds we will explore aftermarket intake manifolds in another video because it is a massive topic. But for now, let's start simple with the gray castings that we can find on our Fords from Factory and out of the Motorsport catalog. Today's technical reference is, again, the official 5 liter Mustang technical reference handbook. This thing is awesome. It is super detailed, it covers foxes, and it touches on the evolutionary differences into our SN95 5 liter cars as well. Speaking about the intake manifolds, there's a really interesting tidbit that should really start this off. First, to understand the manifold that we find on our 5 liter fuel injected cars, they are quite different. They are a huge departure from any of the previous carbureted or throttle body injection designs because they have these super long intake runners and that's because it is a dry manifold design. That means fuel does not have to flow through it so you don't have to worry about puddling. This allows engineers to explore really long runner and interesting complex designs which can promote a lot of good download torque which is inherently street ability and off the line punch. Now there are two major designs. We have the Fox style manifold that we all recognize and then we have the variation of it which is our SN95 manifolds originally sourced from the Thunder Bird and Cougar line because of the lower hood and the ability to fit everything in the small packaging of the MN12 platform. When I first got my 95, people believed that the Fox castings were a better flowing piece and I had even seen some people who had swapped on a Fox casting to delete the elbow, go to a Fox throttle in search of more power, stock for stock. I was always curious if that was actually of any real value. Well, there's a really interesting technical tidbit in the 5 liter reference book that says a Ford engineer who did not wish to be named had indicated that the Cougar and Thunderbird castings actually flow better than the Fox castings, but it doesn't provide any real technical background to define that or back that up for us. However, I was able to find us something. In a old, ancient, scanned PDF copy of an article that I can only find online from around the 1993 to 94 period, it talks about exactly this. They are doing a dyno shootout much like anyone else does where they tested a stock Fox casting against a stock Cougar piece which is identical to the ones that we have on our 94 95s. And how did it turn out? The stock manifold was measured on their test engine at 267.4 horsepower and 313.9 foot-pounds of torque. But the T-Bird Cougar SN95 piece actually tested out to create more 273.8 horsepower about 6 horsepower and 316.5 foot-pounds of torque about 3 foot-pounds of torque. That's really good and it does quantify the assertions that, that were made in the technical reference book. Now to close that off I would not get too hung up on those pieces because that was a test engine, there was a mild cam, and there was a set of aftermarket cylinder heads on that build. So don't take those flywheel numbers away as absolute application to your vehicle. But do note, the SN95 piece does flow a little better, and that's a cool advantage for us. Now let's move on to the main focus of this video, the high performance options. First, let's talk about the GT40 manifold, the one that started it all. This features a really beautiful upper tubular plenum, and then a lower that featured staggered round ports rather than the linear oval ports we found on the stock pieces. These were only factory offered on the 93 to 96 SVT Lightnings, However, luckily, they were offered as a Ford Motorsport catalog piece for a princely sum at the time. 
Now, the trickle-down of that one pretty much uses the exact same manifold and comes to us in the Cobra manifold design. This was found on the 1993 SVT Cobra and Cobra R vehicles, and it was also offered as a Ford Motorsport part number again. Specific to the 9495s, it was found with an integrated elbow cast into it on the SVT Cobra and the 1995 SVT Cobra R with its 351 engine. And finally, we have the Ford Explorer manifold. And this is part of the not so open secret that the 96 to 2000 5 liter equipped Ford Explorers had a pretty good engine in them, aside from a lazy cam and poor exhaust setup. But we're able to take those parts in junkyards, harvest them, and place them on our own cars for good performance gains. But let's take a look at how these very similar, but different, especially in price point, manifolds compare against each other. Now, in Super Ford's magazine in February of 2000, Anderson Ford Motorsport built up an engine that made about 325 horsepower, and they tested each one of these manifolds back to back and published the results. You may have seen that chart floating around the internet in kind of a low definition version, which has a table of numbers. But these tables are kind of hard to compare visually and quickly, is what I've done is I've taken these numbers and I've compiled them into charts through Excel and overlaid both horsepower and torque of each of the three manifolds directly against each other so we can visually get a takeaway of what's going on with them. First up, let's talk about horsepower. On this chart, we have the GT40 line in blue, we have the Cobra line in red, and we have the Explorer line in yellow. And you can see that they map over each other very, very closely, but there are a couple of differences. Let's take a look at those. The winner in peak horsepower is the Cobra manifold at 326.7, the Explorer is second at 326.4, and the GT40 takes third place at 324.3. This is a variance of less than 1% in peak horsepower, and at the end you'll see there's a spot where they taper off and diverge. That is only a 10 horsepower change, which is 3%. To be honest, you will probably never notice 3% difference manifold to manifold, so in this, pretty much call them the same. Moving over to the torque, we see a similar story, but different winners. This one, the GT40 takes tops with 341.3, the Explorer takes second place, 339.2, and the Cobra lags behind at 337.6. So again, can anyone guess what the variances might be? You've got it, 1% in peak numbers, and at the top side, 3% on the top. And each one performs really well, and they are super comparable. The takeaway from this, it is possible to crown a winner, but I would crown it from a different criteria than most. In this one, it's bang for the buck, and I do have to say the Explorer Manifold is the best bang for the buck currently. The Cobra Manifolds are no longer offered by Ford Racing, Ford Motorsport, and they're becoming less and less common whereas the GT40 manifold's never seen a huge circulation to begin with, and those two are going up in price. Is there a point to all these manifolds? Yes, if you want absolute bang for the buck, grab that Explorer piece, clean it up, put some rattle cam paint on it, and go to the races. If you want something that has a cool Cobra look on it, grab that Cobra piece, or if you're doing a restoration, that's the one to get. And finally, if you want a piece of underhood art that performs pretty well, but you want to pay the premium for it, grab that GT40 manifold. Incidentally, if you have a GT40 intake manifold sitting around not doing anything, drop me a line. I'm kind of looking for one for the wall. They're a really nice display piece, if nothing else. That wraps up everything for today. I hope you've been able to take something away from this, and we've been able to look at and bust apart a couple of myths on the differences and the similarities between the common Ford branded intake manifolds for the 5 liter engine. In another video, we will explore the aftermarket options because that is a massive and very interesting topic all of its own. But again, I would like to thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'd be really happy if we could see you again next time. Later.